Hi everyone, I'm Alex and welcome back to our channel. Today I have one of a kind thing for you. So, this is YES 1849, probably the rarest Soviet computer ever produced. In all the time they were produced around 5000 of them. Up to the present day practically none survive it. And this we have fully restored and running. So you'll see it today and there are no more videos so far on YouTube about that. You probably watched our previous episodes of Computers of Chernobyl, a series where we explore the data processing in the Chernobyl zone. So there we are restoring YES 1841, which is uh, also a Soviet computer that was produced and created approximately five years before than this one. So although this one is not related to Chernobyl in any way, it's quite interesting to see how technologies in USSR actually evolved in that five years. So let me start it and let's see. But before, like this video, subscribe to our channel, join us on Patreon and let's do it. So I will use the brake button in order to uh, show some details. Here we have boot screen, test of a memory. So we have 640 kilobytes of the base memory and 384 kilobytes of extended. We can also see here the BIOS version uh, 2.0 and uh, revision 10. And it's made uh, in 1992, so it was pretty fresh. Uh, the big difference is that uh, to enter BIOS it says you to press not F8 or delete uh, but escape. So now if I continue... We have here configuration that says that it has 8286 processor, no coprocessor. It also has a uh, 1.2 megabyte 5 inch drive, uh, can also have 3.5 inch, technically in BIOS there is option, I will show you later. Uh, but uh, funny thing that the power supply actually doesn't have a cord to connect the 3.5 inch drive, so you need to solder it. It also has the hard disk of 200 megabytes, uh, EGA adapter, so this is color display as well, and we will see it. Uh, LPT and COM port, memory, and uh, that's it. Yeah, so uh, the BIOS made on 12th of April 1992. And we proceed with boot. Here it runs a classical MS-DOS, and that's it. Uh, we can uh, use the file manager, and uh, this looks a little bit strange, uh, but the reason is that uh, the graphic card actually has built-in uh, character set optimized with Kirillic, uh, and the pseudo graphic is missing there, so to make it work, we need to actually use uh, the extension quite popular back in 90s and 80s called Kirus, it was developed in Ukraine, in Donetsk, and uh, that's actually fixing everything and also gives a full Kirillic support for those computers that do not have it. Uh, by the way, notice that I didn't launch before the Norton Commander, it's Volkov Commander, and if you start it again, looks pretty like Norton, and uh, you may think that this kind of a clone, uh, let's say it's a functional clone, but quite interesting because in fact uh, with the same functionality this file manager uh, has only two files, vccom and vcini, and uh, that all takes 64 kilobytes. Also it has some advanced additions and um, otherwise full clone of the uh, full functional clone of the uh, Norton Commander. By the way, also Ukrainian thing. We need a mouse, so we also have mouse, of course. And why not to play some game? Let's use some classic, I don't know, Duck Hunt. See, perfectly loading, and let's see if it will start. Should. Yeah. Mm. 
I was missing this. And the point of applications here, um, one cool thing, like, oh uh, yeah, of course, of course, of course. What about Soviet Tetris, classical one? If you didn't know, it was made in Soviet Union as well from 1986, so that's it. That be. Only one thing in the original Tetris is a little bit strange um, controls. So no ISDF, no arrows, you need to use the the numbers and this is really kind of inconvenient. So um, in our future episode, just saying, uh, we will talk about the Deveca computers which are DEC PDP-11 compatible. And uh, specifically, DVK2 uh, that was widely used in Chernobyl was exactly that machine on which this was developed. So, uh, if you'll be able to run actually the DVK2, we will show you as well the Tetris on original monochrome display. But that will be in the future, so we have additional reason to subscribe and not to miss it. So, this is how. Uh, you play it a little bit unusual, but that's pure Tetris, the very, very original one. Yeah. So about the software, uh, there is quite cool things specific for this machine. Uh, discovered absolutely accidentally, so it's called Photon, and this is a text editor, and this is the, so far the most advanced text editor I have seen for DOS. So, made in 1989, somewhere in Russia, um, whatever. But if you press it, uh, here is built-in demo. And uh, this actually is written on the macro language of this text editor, which is built-in. It's a nearly 10 minutes demo. Uh, I am actually going to translate this to English probably and post it on Patreon. So uh, you'll be able to see it because it's really, really interesting. Uh, it's fully animated and uh, for application from 1989, uh, that is pretty impressive uh, because seems to me even has some compiler or something like that. So optimize it for coding. It's really, really gorgeous, uh, so definitely worth attention. Maybe you'll need to try to run it on ES1841 as well, by the way. Could be pretty interesting. So, that's really impressive. Okay, let's exit the full demo, as I said, will be later, but that's quite interesting piece of software. <clears throat> so as, as I said, uh, here from the point of the software, uh, from the point of capabilities of this very computer, it is pretty full scale 286. And it's quite interesting that uh, actually Western chips they are in minority. There is processor, there is chipset. There are literally few chips are foreign, all others are domestic. Um, so works pretty fast, pretty smooth. But uh, the core thing of this is not actually uh, how it works, but it's BIOS. Uh, so I suggest to reboot once more and take a look to it. So we press escape. Uh, 
And here we go. It says Minsk. Built in up for controlling of configuration. The same revision. It's Minsk animated. And here we have a change of configuration, change of extended configuration, initialization of the hard disk test um, applications and exit. So uh, if I press one, here I can see configuration. So uh, thanks to our friend Electron Master who fixed the BIOS battery, we, we actually have here uh, the um, uh, date and the time uh, fully correct. By the way, little bit suspicious that it is written not in European format. And actually, I will show you a little, just in a few minutes, I will show you something um, interesting that this feeling was not wrong. Then we have here time, coprocessor, uh, memory uh, base and extended, types of the um, um, a floppy disk, a type of the uh, uh, hard disk, video adapter. Uh, we can also use the password here and we can exit. So we need to type the number to see uh, options. For example, mm, floppy disk. If I press five, you see it's animated and it asks me about the uh, type for the drive A. Uh, so we have here 1.2 megabytes, five inch, so I place two. And then it will ask me for uh, B drive. I don't have it, so it will be no zero. And uh, only one thing I must reboot after, and it asks me if configuration is correct or no, plus yes. And it asks, <clears throat> would you like to also check the um, another configuration menu? Okay, let's check it. Ah, okay, sorry, wrong selection. But I will show it. So now it reboots. Have no idea why it is beeping. So let's select this uh, changing of extended configuration. And here we have uh, where should be placed BIOS in a ROM or RAM disk, the same as a video. <clears throat> then uh, number of the um, tax of delay and so on. The same. You can, I will not change here anything. Okay, configuration is right. No, I do not want. To my mind, the most interesting here uh, test means. So if you select this four, I really do not want to touch the hard disk drive. Everything is okay there. So just look at this. So uh, it says configuration and uh, choose the test. So write, uh, type the number of uh, test devices or uh, just press enter to test all of them. Uh, for instance, uh, here we can test processor, memory, coprocessor, keyboard, uh, drives, printing, uh, RS-232 interface and a display. Mm, I think let's try display for example. So choose how many times would you like to test it? Let it be one. So normal brightness, elevated brightness, blinking. And uh, aha, here we have characters.
Mm -hmm. Text mode of CG40 to 25. The same 80 to 25. EGA 40 to 25 with bigger symbols 80 to 25 80 to 43 also EGA text mode Aha! That's a covers Graphic mode of CGA it's also beautifully animated. Actually, on video it doesn't look so good as it looks on the display. I think I miss some CRT display in my life, you know? It's pretty nostalgic. So, two colors, graphic mode of CG. Graphic mode of EGA, 320 to 200. Graphic mode uh, 640 to 200 points, 16 colors, so EG. I guess if it is the biggest, likely no. Let's see. Uh -huh, 640 to Soon we ended. <laughs> you see, no glitches. Okay, let's continue. And what do we? Aha, uh -huh. we need to select once more. Well, it is not so fast as I would love to have it. So let's try keyboard, for instance. I have no idea what it will be. Also one test. And what I'm supposed to do. Ah, I just check it. The background, also no glitches. Okay, maybe let's check processor. Because memory we already tested during boot, so do not see a point. Okay, one, one take. This is so beautiful, actually. Also, no glitches. So that's how it looks. And okay, if I choose not to continue, probably will be reboot. Yeah, exactly. So here is uh, a thing I wanted to tell. Uh, I was very suspicious about the format of dates they use it because, for example, in uh, ES 1841 it would be uh, like European format. Um, but it actually appeared. Um, this was a discovery made by Electron Master, uh, who was repairing the power unit. That actually this beautiful bill was, was also cloned. It is for this kind of motherboard. And as you can see, it's pretty the same. So the only one difference that here on ES1849 that has that beautiful writing Minsk on a BIOS uh, initial screen. So such a surprise. But nevertheless, so far, most beautiful I ever saw. So that's it for today. Like this video, subscribe to our channel and see you next time.